In Excel 2007 and newer versions, there's a ribbon that has the commands instead of the old toolbar and menu bar. We can click one of the tabs, click a command, and it makes something happen in Excel. We can also add our own tabs, either by customizing the ribbon so that those tabs are always visible in Excel, or you can create special tabs that only appear with a specific workbook. I've got this parts database, and there's a hidden worksheet with some data that I can show by clicking a button or hide that sheet. So these commands are very specific to one workbook. I wouldn't want this tab showing all the time in Excel because it's not useful anywhere else. I'm going to show you a free tool that lets you see the code for a custom ribbon tab and how you can make a minor change to it and also what you'd have to do to your macros in Excel so that they'll run when one of these buttons is clicked. The tool is called the Custom UI Editor Tool and it's available on this website, the openxmldeveloper.org. So if you go there, there's a search box and you can look for Custom UI Editor Tool. Download that and install it and then you'll be able to look at the code without digging way into the, the back end of an Excel file. Because I want to look at the code for this file, I'm going to have to close it. So I'll close this file and here's the custom UI editor. I want to open that file we were looking at a minute ago. So I'll click open and here's my file. I'll click the file name, click open. Now we can see that workbook name here and an XML file called custom UI. And here's the code for that ribbon. I'm going to make the window a little wider so it doesn't wrap around. And here's the, the namespace for this. And I'm using 2006-01 as the date, which means it can work in Excel 2007 or any later file. We also refer to the ribbon and the tabs. So that would be all the tabs. And then we're going to add a specific tab to this ribbon. The tab ID is DB Macros. And I'm going to have it inserted before the tab, which is the insert tab. So it'll come between the home and insert tabs on the ribbon. And it'll have a label DB Macros. And on that tab, I'm going to have some groups. So you can see where all, each group starts. And this group will have two buttons. And the next will also have two buttons. Each item here has to have a unique name. So I've just used a numbering. So this is group one, this is group one, button one and two, and so on. So for this group, the label will be data entry. The first button will be called instructions and then data entry form. Each of those buttons gets an image and I've made the size large. I don't have too many commands on this ribbon so they can all be nice large buttons. And then we see which macro runs when you click the button. So this one runs a macro called show instructions and the other runs show part form. And those are macros that I've got set up in that Excel file. We can also add screen tips. So this button, the label will say show list, but if we point to that button, it's going to say parts and location list in the pop-up and then a longer description that tells you what to do when you click that button. Now you can make changes to this code. I could put a different label for something. I could change a ID number. And if you make changes to the code, you can check to make sure the code code is still valid. If I added a new button, let's say I call this one button 01, it's the same as another button. And if I click this button, which is validate, the editor warns me that that number is already in use. So I'll click OK. So I'll put it back to 2. I'll click validate again. And now it tells me that the XML is well formed. And so I'd be able to save that file and and it's going to work correctly. Another feature here is the generate callback. If I click this, it's going to go through all my code, find all the on action items, pull out the macro name, and set up a callback for each of those. So I could copy all of this and paste it into Excel and then put the code in here between sub and in sub. So what should happen when someone clicks that button, fill in the code. But I already have code in my Excel file. So I just have to make sure that within the brackets after the macro name, I've got this ribbon callback, which is control as I ribbon control. So we'll look at the Excel file later and just make sure that that's in place for each macro. And to go back to the workbook, I'll just click the workbook name. So we've made any changes. So now I can save that and close this file. So back in Excel, when I open the file, I see enable content and I'll click that so the macros will run. In here, to look at the macros that are set up and make sure that 
ribbon callback is in place, I'm going to press the Alt key and F11. That opens the Visual Basic Editor. We can see the project here. I'll double click Mod Navigate. That's where all the code is. And you can see that I have that ribbon callback in the brackets after each macro. You can see the code that will run. So it might make a worksheet visible and activate it or make it hidden. And the very first one is the one that opens the user form for data entry. So with everything in place, then you can test the custom ribbon, show the database, hide it, show the inventory, show the data entry form, and close that. So you can use the free custom UI editor to look at code for a custom ribbon tab. You can make changes in there and save it. Then in Excel, just make sure all your macros are set up with the ribbon callback. So you can have a custom ribbon tab that appears when you open a workbook and disappears when you close it. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file from this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.